Good afternoon, all the participants in this wonderful uh, topic today. I greet all of you and welcome all of you to go with us through this and see what we can know about it. When one hears the word contraception, the first thing that gets to your mind is, did it, when you talk about contraceptives, what are they? And most people do not realize that true contraceptives are only barriers. All the others, including now barriers, enter into the major group that we call birth control gadgets. Why are they not contraceptive? It is because contraception is stopping conception. And the only true barriers, if they work, can stop con conception. All the others have various other methods of working that I will tell you that you are never told and these will open up your eyes to and what really we should understand this afternoon. Gadgets for population control, for birth control, are mainly in four groups. The first group is intrauterine devices or coils, as most people know them. That is the first group. The second group is the most known. It is called the hormones. Number three is the group of sterilization for both men and women. And number four are the barriers themselves. And I want to start with one that very few people understand fully. That is the coils or intrauterine devices. And these are gadgets which are in many forms. They may have plastic and copper, and they are called copper coils or copper IUDs, or they may have plastic alone, like in Lipe's loop, or they may have the plastic onto which a tube of silastic containing levonorgestrel, the most powerful proge progesterone hormone in use, and then they are called Mirena. Now, when one hears about the coil, it is important to know that the coil is normally inserted into the womb of a woman, and that the coil has two main parts. The head of the coil, which may be in the form of a T, the letter T, with the various amounts of wires of copper around it, or with the elastic tube of progesterone, it is put inside the womb. The second part of coils is a long thread, nylon thread, which gets out from the womb through the cervix into the birth canal. This stays in the birth canal so that the lady can be able to occasionally be checking it. They are told every month after the periods that to check whether it is still in. That is the coil. And please join me here now to understand this thing very, very well. How does the coil work? I have seen even very well-meaning people, very, very well-educated people, and they do not seem to understand clearly how coils work. Coils work in only one method, one mechanism. 100% of its activity is one. It, is, it works only in causing abortions. I want to repeat here that the coil has only one mechanism of action, 100%. And this mechanism of action is by causing abortion. It causes abortion by doing either of two things. Number one, by preventing the baby from implanting into the womb. Or number two, by dislodging a baby who is already implanting. How does it do this? The coil has two parts. The plastic and now the copper causes a wound. 
causes inflammation inside the uterus, endometritis, inflammation in the womb. This inflammation makes the womb have a lot of big cells called macrophages that can destroy the baby. Number two, the copper is cytotoxic. Number two, it is cardiotoxic. It poisons. It is a big poison. When a mother, when any lady has a copper inside her womb, that copper dissolves and fills her, the lining of her whole womb. And that womb, therefore, is one of the greatest poisoned parts of her body. And when the baby, like they are always done, is formed in the outer parts of the tubes and then comes down through the fallopian tube to get into the womb around day five to day nine, for the purposes of implantation, the place is poisoned. There are macrophages brought by inflammation. And number two, is that there is poison from copper or number three and then the whole lining has been eaten away and destroyed by progesterone if a lady is using mirena so everybody needs to understand this that there is no question of any other ambiguity there is no confusion coils are abortion tools they work only by killing and babies. They are some of the most vicious things I know. And therefore, I always ask, when I see a lady wearing a coil or who has a coil and I look at her, I feel very sad for her because she is a good person and may not know. She was not told. And that is why St. Paul organizes this function today. That you see, we have put this coil in you. This coil will cannot work in two ways. It can only work by causing abortion and therefore you become an abortionist month after month when you conceive you kill the baby sometimes and father is here that is his line but this is my line too that i wonder when these ladies are actually christians and if unfortunately they are in the catholic church and they have a coil and ask themselves these ladies every month with the blood of the innocent baby streaming down their fingers and maybe their husbands too because they are in a union and in the sanctuary. And our Lord is lifted up during and you can't believe it. You can't believe what tragedy this is in the church and you ask yourself, why? is great damage happening to the church. It is because of this continuous killing of babies happening in the Catholic church, even in churches, in the sanctuary, even in adoration chapels that there are ladies there with the coils. What is my advice? My advice is that if you ever wear a coil, that it is good maybe you stop going to church because unless you you, you can't repent with it in your body. You can't keep somebody's goat you have stolen and then say you are forgiven. Remove the damn thing. Or please do not go and desecrate the church and desecrate the other people in church. Now, that is the mechanism of action. Does the coil prevent fertilization? No. It cannot prevent fertilization. And this is the reason. Number one is that the egg is out there at the, in, in the ovary and it will be picked up by the fibria of the hands of the fallopian tube and it will never pass from the ampulla of the tube before it is fertilized. Number two, the male seed is in the birth canal. Now you have already discussed, you have already discussed natural family planning and therefore you must have discussed about the transport of the male seeds. Remember, the birth canal is extremely acidic, is the most hostile part of the female body. How do the male seeds survive there? They don't. In normal circumstances, when a husband meets with his wife, his seeds are normally killed in total. 
between five and 10 minutes. All of them are dead. And therefore, and this is why natural family planning is special, because in a particular time, in a month, two months or three months, a lady becomes fertile. And when she is fertile, she is able to remove this acidity from her system. And these traveling, traveling these alkali that remove the acidity is the famous mucus. And this mucus, when it starts, fly, it starts, it starts flowing out, that bath canal becomes completely alkali. And I can tell you that mucus makes special carriage facilities for male seeds. They even do not know what carries them because within five minutes, they can be removed from outside the bath canal through that uterus to the fallopian, to the end of the fallopian tube and the coil will not even know what is happening. So the coil never, has never affected the male seeds. It can't affect the egg is far and therefore always affects the baby after the baby is born. So the coil is not a contraceptive. The coil is an abortion device in an abortive fashion. Now, after we understand that, and today if you learn nothing else from me, please learn that, that the coil is not a contraceptive, that the coil is an abortion device, that when we were young and these things came to this country and they came just the other day actually, not when we were young, I was still an old doctor. They came to this country in the 80s. That these things, the coils were not inserted in ladies who had less than three children. Because of the next part of the coil I'm going to, the complications, the side effects of the coil. And the side effects include, number one, the physical effects by the coil itself. And these include, number one, heavy bleeding heavy bleeding because the coil disturbs the lining of the womb. Number two, painful periods, these menorrhea, and they can cause a lot of pain. Number three, cramping. Even ladies who are not having cramping before start cramping now. Number four, and the most tragic is the infection. Like I told you, the coil is sitting pretty inside the womb. In matters of speech, the womb is a sacred place. It is a sterile place. Nobody is allowed to go loitering inside the womb. The endometrial cavity is sanctosanct. It is, you do not play games inside the womb of a woman unless you want to destroy humanity. There is a coil in that womb. And from that coil, two ladders ran down into a bath canal. When God created women, he meant that the bath canal must have a family of five to seven bacteria. These families of bacteria, actually, they have a purpose. They are the ones that create the acidity in the bath canal. Why the acidity? In God's own wisdom, he put the bath canal where it is anatomically, and he also put the opening of the intestines about two inches away. The opening to the to the, the opening from the intestines has actually a door that anybody can close and even pro, and even prevent air from coming out. But the bath canal is open, and sometimes I I, I wonder why people don't ask. Why did God leave this? This is the road to the future. This is the road to the children. Why did he leave the bath canal open? How did he think that this wonderful house was going to be protected? And that is why he put the, he put the families of five bacteria in them. And those bacteria are actually aerobic. They use air to make acid, acetic acid very high concentrations of it and that acidity in the bath canal is the one that has kept our mothers from the time of creation to
to today, before bad manners came to contaminate women, it is what has kept women without any problem reproductively. They produce the acid, these bacteria, and these bacteria, if you take them to the uterus, they become a disease. In fact, if you close the birth canal, like what happens a lot with a lot of modern ladies, when they close it, they think that God, and I think they do not know, that actually if God wanted to put a zip, he would have put a zip on the birth canal where people could open and close as they wished. But he left it open so that it has 24-hour air circulation. And this air circulation is the health, is the doctor for gynecology of the woman. That air, you play games with it. You are asking for trouble. Now, there is ladders in this bacterial laden bath canal that leave it and go up. And that cervix opens twice per month during menstruation and during fertility. During that time, bacteria climb up. And therefore, the tragedy of the people with the coils is always infection. Oh, you should hear them. I am been a, I've been in this field for some time, like Paolo said, and I can tell you they are extremely, they are extremely uncomfortable. And I can tell you as a doctor, I really do not think that there's nothing that people have brought to, to humiliate, to destroy, to hurt, to subjugate women, to violate them. I do not believe in fact there is anything as violent as a person putting a coil in a woman is violating her unto death because when you do that and these bacteria now climb from the, with the climb with those strings into the uterus they cause infection studies done in this country and elsewhere show that 93% and above of all women with a coil at all times are always infected Women are our mothers. Women, when they are our little girls, when they are our little daughters, our sisters, they are the mothers of the future. Everybody needs to take special interest, special protection, and special concern for women. And anybody who injures a woman is a criminal. From where my mind, my mind works, anybody who puts a coil in any woman, in any fair environment, that person needs to be arrested. And I am not playing games here. I can tell you in 1985, the coils were banned in the United States of America. They were banned in Europe. They are found in Africa because they can be used for research amongst primates, amongst lower animals, and amongst black women because they are counted as lower animals. They are not used in human beings. And that is what I say and call you out there, you my brothers and sisters, you people of good will, that it is time now to say no to this thing by giving people the truth, by telling them what St. Paul's wanted me to tell you today. The things you have not been told about the coil, that if you have it today, please ask your neighbor to remove it if you can't have a doctor because it is a tragedy that you are wearing it and the person who put it in you did not tell you what I'm telling you and that was criminal. Infection is a terrible thing that happens to nearly all women with the coil. This infection causes continuous, recurrent, and changing discharge. Discharge that may be of any color. There is false smelling. This lady has no idea why she's smelling like sewer and she's taking bath because she has been violated by somebody because she has been terribly injured by somebody. The wearing of the coil in your home, your wife is being violated. If you are the man in this house, I call you to wake up and go and get this thing out of your family. So infection is a nightmare in people 
who wear coils. And this infection, therefore, in fact, causes a lot of fighting in the family because this lady is faithful. And then she has this infection that comes every time. She is itching. She has this smell. She has this discharge. And, she, you know, there is a tragedy that ladies seem to think that men are unfaithful. And she says, it must be my husband. And ask the husband, I can tell you that when you have that thing, when you have the coil in you, then you should be told that from this time, you are going to basically destroy your marriage. For you can understand, you and your, your matrimonial matrimonial bed with this smell, with this discharge, and it is not going. You take treatment. It is not going. That's why you suspect your husband. You start fighting in your own marriage. Some people even separate. Others even divorce, quoting infidelity because nobody told them the truth. For the first time after a long, long time, St. Paul's is a Catholic church, is a Catholic chapel. And I am proud of St. Paul today because St. Paul has asked me to tell you this and I'm proud to tell you clearly that this you should have told you, you should have been told before. Now you know it, that infection is very common. And from this infection, then you end up getting blocked tubes. One of the main complications of ladies who have been using the coil is that finally, when they want to have children, now can't have children. Why? Because the fallopian tubes are blocked. My friends understand this, that in this country as we are now, nearly one third of all our daughters who are getting married now cannot have children. Infertility is a major problem in this country. Why is it? It is part of the reason is because of things to do with affecting the reproductive system of ladies. And one of the greatest enemies is the coil. Therefore, now you understand the coil. And for those who, want, who may want to ask questions, because this is a straightforward thing, the coil, it is a killer gadget inserted in women for no any other reason except to abort their babies. Number two, to hurt the woman. It was never put in women with the less than three children. Now I can tell you, I have seen school girls with it. And you can say, when we become more advanced, when we become more educated, when we go to the 22nd century, that we will be better informed. I can tell you, we are getting more idiotic by the moment, or we are getting more evil in everything. Because I can tell you, you who gives coils, you who inserts coils, please stop. It is, I promise you, because I'm here, you can see, and I can tell you, I am a human being. My mother was a human being. If that thing cannot be put in a woman in America, in a woman in Europe, it must not be put in my daughter, in my sister, in my mother, in my wife. It must not be put in, in Africa. And some of us in this continent, God has given us the ability to go to school and we know these things. And because we know them, let us use the fora we have. And St. Paul's again, congratulations. I wish for only four more Catholic churches, more, four more Catholic parishes may have the courage that you have and give time for the people in our church especially. To learn about this, let us not do unnecessary things. Let us become the people of life, especially in our churches. Those are the complications of the coil, that it affects the woman. It affects the husband because this man, his wife has been taken away from him. His wife, who was a beautiful young lady when he married her, has started smelling all over the place. There is water in the house. She has this discharge. She is accusing him of being unfaithful. These things works on marriage like Satan himself would. Number three, when now she wants to have a child and says, go remove it, and it is removed, now she can't have a child, she tries some investigations and she is told, 
her tubes are blocked. Today, participants of this show, if you learn nothing else from me, learn something about the coil, about the IUD. The thing is demonic. If you are wearing it, have it removed. If you have put it in somebody, call them back and remove the damn thing. You can't use it in human beings and our people are human beings too. The second group of gadgets for birth control, not contraceptives, are hormones. There is not a single hormone, I repeat, there is not a single hormone that is purely contraceptive. These, now, what about these hormonal contraceptives then? They are made from two hormones which naturally live in the body of any woman, any girl. As the girl child grows, when she reaches puberty, her eggs starts growing, and when they start growing, a growing egg starts producing more and more estrogen. And when the egg is released, the shell of the egg, the corpus luteum, the yellow body starts producing the progesterone. Now these two hormones, the one that you hear people talking about hormonal imbalance, most of the time without even understanding what that word means, hormonal imbalance, are the ones that have been used because they are the ones that sustain the body of the woman. They are the ones that make up the body of every girl, the body of every woman work properly. If you manipulate them, then you can be able in a very, very simple way to destroy her as a woman like nothing else can. Using these two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, then they are made into medications that can be used. And I want to say, because I've used the word medication, contraceptives, write these down in the, in the book of your heart, write it down and please in capital letters. Contraceptives, birth control gadgets are not medical things. They belong to a class of social drugs like alcohol, like bangi, like cigarettes. Now, for those of you who were alive and well before 1985, you knew that they were never allowed into any health facility because they are not medical things. Number two, Whenever you use them in a woman, you do not use them to treat any known condition. You treat them to make them unwell. You do not bring things that cause disease into medical hospitals. Our politicians by 1985, and I can tell you the tragedy of politicians who will not consult and who will not reason. They were approached by a very vicious international, international uh, NGO, which is called International Planned Parenthood Federation, IPPF, which actually owns these gadgets that you call contraceptives. And they told our government that if you allow us to take these things to the hospital so that we can teach mothers there, then we shall pay for you uh, the vaccines so that you can have them for free. And a lot of people do not realize that that's why vaccines are still free in government hospitals, because you have exchanged destruction of the mother for destruction of the babies, because when the time comes and if there will be in a Catholic church brave enough to want to discuss vaccination, we shall be here and we shall discuss it, but now we are on contraceptives. 1985, a bit of history for you. The first, the first family planning clinic in this country was started in 1955. 1948, Rockefeller D 
the second had come from India and he passed through here, 1948. And he talked to the people who had colonized us that time and sold them the idea of what America was thinking that the black people and the people outside America were increasing and therefore they were going to use their resources and there was need to stop their propagation to stop and reduce their population and therefore in 1955 the first clinic family planning clinic that's what they were always called was started at this uh, this uh, this estate near at Kaloleni Kaloleni near the city stadium that is where you have clinic number one clinic number two is in Gajoni in Mombasa Clinic and number three is actually in Thika. You will know how they were counted because by the time they reached this one outside Kenyatta Hospital, that is clinic number 66, because they could not go into hospitals up to 1985. And from 1985, they entered the hospitals. Now we go back to the contraceptives. These hormones, have been manufactured into four types of delivery. Delivery number one, they are in the form of tablets called pills. You come up and amend their tablets. Number two, there are those ones which are given by injection. Like Depo-Provera is a hormone that is injected. The third group is implant. Implants is the one from Nor plant to Jadel to Unif plant to the others that you're seeing nowadays in putting even in children, which are now the current thing. And number four, you have the insurgents. These are the ones that like the one which is being carried by the coil. They are carried by something else. But let us look at them in their simplicity. And we look at hormones. And when given to a woman, with the aim of preventing her from conceiving, not from conceiving, from carrying a baby. What are you doing? <clears throat> Remember in a very real sense, when God created you, and if you believe in him, in whichever tongue you pray him, then every sexual activity in your life must be open for transmission of life. Unless, of course, you want to be converted into a sodomite, into, into a homosexual. Because homosexuals, even when they meet, they already know they cannot have a child. They'll never have a child. A woman in, in contraceptives and her husband is it, it's, it's so as, as though they are also sodomites. It's, they are homosexuals. They can't have children. Their meeting is absolutely of no consequence because... Sexual contact for the purposes of strengthening marriage never need to result in a baby if you are not planning for a baby. Why? In God's own creation, a woman's life, 98% of her life, she will always be infertile. She is only fertile in 2% of her whole life. She can meet with her spouse as she wants 98% of her life and she will never conceive. And only conceive if using responsibility, they are ready to have a child and therefore identify fertility and meet during that time and have a child if they wish to have a child that time. These gadgets, how do they work? The mechanic, I have told you what they are made of. They are made of hormones, mainly two hormones. How do they work? What is the mechanism of their action? One of the most important is that they may prevent in 20%, they prevent ovulation. When they prevent ovula ovulation, they work as a contraceptive. Number two, they thicken the mucus in the cervix. I told you, no woman can ever conceive 
unless he has that mucus. And that's what we say in natural family planning, that a woman who wants to look for a baby today, that her and her husband know that this is the right time to try because fertility speaks. When fertility speaks in your marriage, what does it tell your wife? It tells her wife, uh, your wife like this. When she sees these mucus, this makamasi like secretion that comes. Number two, which makes her extremely slippery. And number three, which makes her feel wet. This happens only when a woman can conceive. This is what we call fertility. And in a woman who, no woman throughout history has ever conceived unless she was like that. And that takes one to three days in two or three months because half of all the eggs produced by women are infertile and they don't give you fertility symptoms. Therefore, this mucus is one of the targets of the, of the pill, of the hormonal pill. When it is taken, it makes it a thick so that the male seeds cannot pass through it. So, stops ovulation. Number two, thickens the mucus. How does it stop ovulation? By working at the pituitary gland, the master gland. The choir master of reproduction is the pituitary gland at the base of your, blood, of your brain, affecting it. And therefore, that is where you see it affecting the thyroid gland. That is why you see it affecting metabolism. That is why you see women's body changing. And I'll come to that, but I don't want to lose this opportunity. That's why you see when your wife starts taking the first pill, you lose your wife because when she's again violated by this pill, then the first thing to do is her skin changes. A lady who was smooth and beautiful and soft suddenly develops acne and peoples on the face and started reacting. Her hair starts falling off from ages, either alopecia areata, she starts getting parts of the, of the skull without, uh, without hair. When she, she brushes her hair, a lot of it is in the brush because she has swallowed this drug that affects her pituitary gland and she's now paying what she should never pay because a woman is a special creature of God. She's as paying and this payment, as we shall see, will not only affect her, it will affect her whole family. It will affect her marriage. It can kill her and it kills them. It can give her cancer and it gives them cancer. It is demonic. So when she uses it, it is stops ovulation by affecting the working of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is the ordering master which orders the eggs to start working. When you affect it, then ovulation is affected. It affects the mucus. It affects the mucus by affecting ovulation because mucus is produced under the influence of estrogen, which is a byproduct of a growing egg. So the mucus is gone. And number three, it attacks the lining of the womb. Every one of them, every one of the contraceptive, hormonal contraceptives thins the endometrium. And therefore, when fertilization does occur, and it occurs in 40 to 50% of cases, that baby will be aborted. And that's why we say in general, as a general rule, and this you can write down and take to the bank, that every hormonal contraceptive is also an aborting agent, is also an abortifacient, is an agent that causes abortion. So it affects the lining of the womb. And number four, it affects the movement, the ciliary movement of the cilia in the fallopian tube that is supposed to to, that's supposed to help uh, the transport of the, of the, of the, of the, of the egg towards, towards, towards the uterus. So that is how it works. That's the mechanism of action. And because it attacks fertility, it attacks the possibility of a baby at so many parts, from the pituitary to the uterus, to the ovary, to the cervix, 
to the fallopian tube. They are extremely, they are extremely effective in preventing you from becoming pregnant. But then you can as well know again this you never knew and that is why john that's why paul peter and saint paul's chapel put up this zoom today because you should know what you were never told number one that therefore after you succeed in preventing your baby from living what is the price what are the side effects what price do you pay for this i've already mentioned a few number one just to do with your skin that's your skin changes forever that your skin that was beautiful and soft starts looking like a puberty skin with pimples and acne you know like like my people would call it you know the, 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 you have become something your wife who was very very beautiful is suddenly converted into something despicable she stops being attractive anymore she doesn't even feel attractive and truly she is not actually attractive and it affects her in this way any hormone in the body of your woman is the hormone of pregnancy somebody has come into your house and impregnated your wife for now and throughout and for those who are married here and you know the mood changes in pregnancy these wives these your wife will be in this mood the mood of pregnancy with a short temper with the irritability with the problems of concentration with the problems of relationship and she has children in the house and she has a husband and somebody was wondering the other day why are there so many separations and divorces in this country and where is it coming from my friends the women have been poisoned even they do not know what is happening the men have no idea why their wives are doing this and some of the men are the same people who go to collect these pills for their wives they take them to go and collect these pills they do not know that they are co-actors in the poisoning of the most important pillar in your own marriage your wife if somebody wants to give poison in your family tell them to poison the rat but they can't choose on the mother of the home because without that pillar in the home when something goes wrong with that pillar in your home then your home has fallen apart changes in her own personality we have talked but what about in her own health physically more than 40 percent of them will always develop high blood pressure high blood pressure develops because their kidneys are injured and their heart is injured their blood vessels are injured their cholesterol levels go up their heart starts to become a bit bigger the poor girls start and they are very young people you walk with them and they are panting all over the place because of this problem this is tragic because it is a real and some of these effects in the wife will never be normal again even when she stops especially hypertension those ladies who who have become hypertension because of using these poisonous poisonous things these poisons the hormonal contraceptives they have in a way put themselves in a place where they will never be able to live in the rest for the rest of their life and remember any woman who had even the mildest blood pressure in pregnancy must never ever take hormonal contraceptives but these you are never told so hypertension injury to the kidney injury to the heart injury to the blood vessels injury to the liver including adenomas of the liver benign growths in the liver that when they burst 
they can burst and they are, we have seen a lot of very severe internal bleeding because of these adenomas. These things give you a problem with gastric irritation, with the gastric ulcers, ulceration. They give you problems with the asthma, with the problems with your breathing system. They affect your breathing system and then you have these continuous cold that you do not know what to do with. They affect your reproductive system. There is no woman who is on hormonal contraceptive who does not have if it is the main ones you are taking now, like the progesterone containing ones. And they are the ones that you see the 35 packed pills in tablets that you give mothers who are breastfeeding. And I can tell you that is evil. Progesterone always gets out of the breast milk. If you see a mother breastfeeding and she is using pills, they are called micro -root. She does not know, but somebody is not only aiming at destroying her, but is aiming at destroying even her own children. But some of you seem like you are worried. Why should you be worried? Can't you look back in history where these things come from? I told you about International Planned Parenthood Federation, IPPF. IPPF is actually a child of one of the most evil woman ever created by anybody. She is called Margaret Sanga. Margaret Sanga is the one who is actually the mother of modern contraception. Margaret Sanga came from a class of a professor 1980, 1884 of Sir Francis Galton. Professor Sir Francis Galton actually is the one who started the study now you hear called eugenics. What is eugenics? Galton said that God is not created as the same. He said that he created super races, the white races, and some scum black people to serve the white people. Before him, they were others. But I want you to understand that attacking the woman, attacking our children, attacking our future is not a new thing. It has happened from the people who enslaved the Africans in many years ago and destroyed them. It comes from a people who completely destroyed the Rand Indians in America, who got rid of the Aborigines in Australia and the Maori of New, of New Zealand, who were here in this country and killed nearly half a million, maybe a million of our people during the colonial years. These are the same owners of these contraceptives that you allow in this country. And we shamelessly in this country can see you go to the most humble dispensaries in the countryside of this country and you meet these contraceptives and there are no drugs. A child will die because there is no penicillin, which costs 50 shillings, but her mother can get an implant which causes 100,000 shillings, and we consider ourselves, number one, to be Christians, and number two, to be an independent country. Shame on all of us. A time will come, I hope, that when God will raise amongst us people of faith, people of courage, who will stand up and say, enough is enough, no more poisoning of our mothers, no more poisoning of our children, I was talking about this annoying tablet that is called microlude that is given to mothers. Mothers then who feed it on their babies through the breast milk and it goes to this breast milk. And wow, I can tell you what happens is that these children, if they are boys, they are born, they finally grow up. You see them big and huge and their testes are small like this, like those ones of cockroaches. And these are our young men now who are marrying a lady and you hear them being told that their count of the male seeds is very low, the count of their male seeds is not very good. What happened? These are African boys whose grandfathers and great grandfathers were polygamous and with 10 wives and they were able to have children with all of them. Now they can't even 
have children with only one wife because they were damaged, they were eaten, their testes were eaten by their own mothers when they were breastfeeding. This is what is happening to our girls now. That nearly a third or more, and mainly those whose mothers were breastfeeding them while taking contraception, that they have irregular periods, that they have, that they have a polycystic ovarian disease, that they are not able to have children, that they have hormonal imbalance. Where did it come from? It was not here. Where did it come from? It is man-made. It is the evil of man coming to eat man all over again. That is my glory. The damage to the mother whose birth canal becomes very thin as long as she is on this. And therefore, bye-bye to marital activity. Conjugal rights are over because her system is so thin. If she meets with her spouse, she feels pain and she feels irritation. She is a very uncomfortable lady. In fact, most of them, if you want to know they are on it, even if they did not tell you, and the other one called it the Poprovera, you will meet them in the evening around the night at 11, they are still washing things in the kitchen and praying prayers that never end, that God help my husband to come and sleep so that he does not remember about me. And then if you come and you do not sleep, then they start even cleaning the wall, praying even more, God help him to go and sleep because there is nothing they fear in their marriage like marital activity. Why? Because your wife was damaged as you sat there and getting fat and doing nothing and thinking just working where you work is more important. You do not find out. You do not ask. Is your wife being damaged under your own nose? What did you do about it? Why couldn't you help your wife live a better life? Why couldn't you take her for education in natural birth regulation, which your great, great grandmother knew it at the tip of her finger, which is still there today that we can teach you in 10, 15 minutes. And you have no confidence. You do not care enough. You allow your wife to take microroot and injure herself, injure your marriage, separate you, Start creating unfaithfulness in the family because when your wife has been taken away by the pills, she doesn't want you. She's praying in the middle of the night that you sleep. And when you sleep, she comes to check whether you have really, if she meets you not asleep, she goes back to do something else. I want to tell you, I'm telling you about real things. This is what is happening in your own marriages. But now you know this you never knew before. And that is why this particular session was all about. I want to talk about the demon pill. There's a demon pill called the giant pill or the mega pill. It is called RU486, RU, Russell O'Clough 2486. Russell O'Clough has a beautiful history. And today, because I'm, I'm, I'm old in the house, so let me give you this story. Many years ago, from Galton, Galton who taught Margaret Sanger, Margaret Sanger who started International Planned Parenthood Federation, IPPF, which is getting billions of Kenya shillings to bring poison in the country in the form of contraceptives such that all the coffee you do here, all the tea mixed together cannot even pay for them. That in 1933, these same people went to Germany and there was a young man from Austria called Hitler. And they influenced him. He was not a very educated person. They influenced him. These, these, uh, the, the, these people of eugenics, they influenced him to, to start killing people who were not fully white. And the people who are not fully white were mainly the Jews that time. And the Holocaust that you hear, most of them were killed by a gas, a gas called Zyklon B. Zyklon B was made by a company called Russell O'Craft. And that company is the same one 
that makes the abortion pill from killing Jews in Nazi Germany. I told you, and I hope you are understanding that I'm telling you that if you see contraception near you, if you see it in your family, with your wife, with your child, that you are seeing racism. You are seeing great neo-colonization. You are seeing evil being committed in your own country and you are doing nothing and you are a Christian, and I think you should go for confession when Corona goes after five years. Now, this Ruzel Oclaf has made a tablet that you will hear people here calling it, they have baptized it. You can think it is something edible, that a P2. It is an abortion pill. It is morning after pill. It is a demonic pill. A normal, Microlute tablet has the following amount of progesterone, 0 0.03 milligrams. One tablet of P2, one of the demonic tablet has 0 0.75 milligrams. If you take 25 tablets of microlute and swallow all of them together, they are supposed to be swallowed for 25 days and swallow them all of them today, you have taken the equivalent of one tablet of P2. If now they are not, they don't take one, they take two. Because within 24 hours, you take the next one, another 25 tablets. 50 tablets of progesterone. In a little girl I hear nowadays, because you don't need a prescription, even primary school girls are I taking think I and it is completely evil pill. Now, this pill, this morning after pill, what is the mechanism of action? It has no two methods of action. Like the coil, it is a 100% tablet for killing the baby. It is an abortion tablet. Remember, it is a morning after. If you meet today and there is fertility, you will conceive today. But you are told that you can swallow it in the next two or even three. Nowadays, I hear up to five days from when you met because it can still kill the baby is a killer tablet, the P2. I have not seen in this country any child who actually owns or runs a chemist. They are all run by adults. They are all run by very well educated people, except we have some chokoras in them. But, and they are the same people selling these killer tablets to these little girls and to women throughout the country. Yes, you will kill the, the baby, but what are the complications of the morning after pill? One of the main complications of the morning after pill is that it affects your pituitary, it affects your ovary for the rest of your life and it will never leave your body. Number two, it is a cancer-causing drug. Of late, some of you have heard, the women of this country, and especially the highly educated, the feeder group, those, 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 those culture of death groups in this country, you have heard them shouting that the government should make cancer a national emergency or whatever they want. I can tell you, and you can look this and you will find that I am right, that this cancer is a child of contraception. That the more contraceptives you are taking, the more cancer you are going to have. And you are not going to deal, we are not going to deal with the cancer in this country unless we stop bringing these dead drugs, these dead productions, these contraceptives in this country. When you take morning after pill, and you have taken four and above doses of this in your life, don't worry very much because you are not going to take a lot of money from this country. By the time you finish university, you will be having cancer of the breast or cancer of the ovary or cancer of the, of the, of the, of the cervix. And anyway, you will die like we are burying our own children in the year 20s 
with the cancer of the breast. A cancer of the breast that even medical medical books now still thinks they have not realized. Books have not read the books still say it's cancers of old ladies above 60 years. We are seeing it now in ladies in girls, in children, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years is where we have maximum of, on them. What are we seeing this as a result of? Remember, the modern girl, the modern woman has not invented the breast. The breast is an organ created by God as Nyo Nyo for bringing all of us, all of us human beings as we grew from childhood to give us immunity, to give us nutrition, and to board us with our mothers and our families. The Nyo Nyo is one of the most important organs in the body of the woman. And I want to say this, and I don't want to disappoint anybody, that there are people who think that they are cosmetic, that you want to use them for cosmetics, so you what, what, no. That Nyo Nyo is something special for the food of the child. And mm -hmm. therefore, do not poison it and when you poison it one of the things it does it does not forgive you it will honor you with giving you cancer and killing you in return this p2 tablet is a cancer calling is a cancer causing drug it is being given to school girls primary secondary university nearly everybody carries it in their bag i want to say this that the time has come when we all must stand up and say, we need to protect our people, we need to protect our children, we need to, pro a time will come when people of life, the new doom, the culture of life, and especially those who are brave, will walk from street to street, looking for pharmacies that keep these deadly things and stopping them and removing them and throwing them away and giving a warning that if anybody is keeping these poisons in your shop, we shall blacklist you. This is one of the most dangerous hormonal pills ever made. The abortion pill, which has the roots in Nazi Germany. Germany, which killed six million and above Jews and other people and destroyed the world. This same trend of the eugenics which is being produced they, they brought here and which unfortunately even today is being forced it is although i'm happy because most people are standing up and saying no it is the same thing you are seeing being brought up in the kihika abortion bill it is still about this new colonial this racism these subjugation of our people of the black people by a people who think we should not live but they know why they are doing that and you have seen examples look at central kenya sometimes they talk too much by the mount kenya region if you see anybody with more than two children and they have a degree come i will buy you mandazi they don't get children now they are closing their own nursery schools. Their churches are empty. Their homes are empty because they have become ambassadors and followers of eugenics, followers of the people who hate life, who hate children, people who are rich and talk too much. A time must come then when a new Christendom, new priests, new Christians, new, will stand up and say, we must now not only pray, but we must do action, like St. Paul says, that action, that, 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 that prayer without action is basically dead. Thank you, Dr. Uh, I hope that's all. There will be questions. Now I will call father to uh, also add something he had some sharing about the same also very experienced in the field when i was sharing this some people were asking of course the people who are pro abortion and all these killers were asking what do they know about women and i asked them 
what makes you believe that you have monopoly of knowledge about women <laughs> than the doctors who've been dealing with them? <laughs> so <laughs> that's very interesting. People are making very good comments even on the in the YouTube. So and 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 uh, it will go far and wide in reaching the community. Uh, we welcome Father Father uh, Gatimu, Karibu Sana, and uh, feed us more. Wonderful, uh, uh, my dear participants, this afternoon, I've been on of September, this year, 2020 of the Lord. I first take this moment to appreciate your presence. I also take this opportunity to appreciate my ve old veteran, Dr. Steven Kimodo Karanja, for being here and presenting to us that wonderful information. Uh, my name is Father Samuel Karanja Gatimo from the Archdiocese of Nyeri. I'm the family director of the Archdiocese of Nyeri. I'm also just a simple servant of the Lord to propagate the culture of life. I'm uh, working with Human Life International Kenya, with Population Research Institute, and the Family Life Counseling Association of Kenya Park. And also in our hospitals, you will find me together with Dr. Stephen Kimoro Karanja. To begin with, is that it is very wrong to perceive or think that natural family planning is the Catholic way of contraception. It is not. It is very clear also to, be, to understand that today as we gather here, we are here to understand what is, uh, is hidden and very lasting to only a few. In the, uh, in the history or in our history, we better understand it is good that uh, Dr. Karanja mentioned about a brief history of contraception. Let me put it uh, in a, a different way. Contraception was for animals, not human beings. When animals and pastoralists are moving from one point to another, they don't want the burden of young ones. So the, that's where contraception began. The word contraception is from two Latin words, contra conceptio against conception. So animals were put some small pebbles of stones or something in the wombs to avoid any conception taking place. Uh, but today, most of what we refer to as uh, contraceptives, they are not. They cause abortions. So we refer to them as abortifacients. Abort partially. They uh, make a bush to take place. So as I continue, my dear brethren, is that the sexuality we bear, being male and female, is a symbol of our divine nature. And it's portrayed by the communion of fasting, male and female, blessed with the fertility that they can conceive, which, according to natural family planning that we have already looked at, is that a woman is only fertile for a maximum of eight days, actually six, a maximum of eight days in a month. And that fertility is a blessing. It portrays that we have the communion with the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And marriage is more than a metaphor. It is a sacrament a visible sign portraying and inferring an invisible grace to us. The communion of the pastors, the Holy Trinity. St. John Paul II, in the, his uh, teaching of the theology of the body, says the human body as it is, is the naked uh, face of the divine nature. The naked face of the divine nature. Through the intimate love of the spouses, the spouses experience the love of Christ. We experience the love of Christ when we have that conjugal act without contraception, without that mentality. The sacrament of matrimony espouses the image of the church and Christ as a bride and a bridegroom. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, 
St. Gregory of Nyssa to the saints, we, me and you, wore a garment of misery. Today, in our contemporary society, the garment of misery is contraceptive, abortifacient, messing with our marriage, with our divine nature. So, brethren, today, our hope of marriage is founded in God. We need to make sure, don't compare your marriage with another person's marriage. Our marriage is unique. Your marriage will be unique if you are not yet married. And there, otherwise, you will fall in a distance. So, God has given us a new family and a board of his covenant. What then are we to make of our natural families? Quite simply, we are to make them heaven. I quote their court hands. Is one of the project, uh, our contemporary uh, our projectors. But now, guided by Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, speak the truth in a spirit of love. I want to also add a little of what Dr. Tari has said. So what Dr. Tari has said is very true, and I accept. And I want to add now, we have what you call combined or contraceptive pick. So the pill contains a combination of progesterone and the estrogen in a proportion that varies from one to the other and the preparation process. However, they inhibit ovulation. So the mother, this woman has uh, the, bas uh, the, uh, the basket there full of the ovaries, but the follicles are not allowed to give us the ova, the egg in the mouth. What will happen? If you don't produce, that is a time bomb. Why, as Dr. As Dr. Karanja is saying, how why how can we fight of ovarian cancer if we are not we are inhibiting ovulation to take place? What will happen today if beans are, do not leave the pond? Even themselves, when they dry, they spill out of the pond. So again, the weakening of the cervical mucus. The mucus, uh, the mucus, as he said, is that it is one, it helps us with the aerobics, the, uh, with the proper way of that, of that woman's uh, reproductive organ. How it stays. It is also uh, the, the medium for sperms towards the fallopian tube, towards the ducts. But today you find you have used contraceptives. Again, with, with the weakening of the mucus, and with the acidity of the mucus, the, it becomes a physical barrier to sperm matazoas, making also the endometrium too thin for implantation. So on the eighth day, the fertilization has taken place, as Dr. Stephen said, but from there, they have nowhere to stay. On the eighth day, the process is stage. So there's no uh, room, or there's no home, there's no nest. So here I think Jesus Christ is saying the son of man has nowhere to raise his head because of contraceptive. Brother, and here that's why I say most of us we are worse than the terrorists. The terrorist only kills once and some of them even commit suicide. But some of us we are walking terrorists, killing thousands and thousands of children. Lives in our lives. They cause swearing. You find some people, you wonder what is wrong with this woman. She has swearing all over. She have patches all over, pain in the legs, in the, on their hands, because of some of the combined oral pills. They cause the yellowing of the skin, what uh, 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 the child was calling acne. And some of them, they feel uh, now they're becoming brown, they're becoming better. No, this is a disease. This is a parchment of the disease of the, uh, you require to visit a dermatologist later. Brethren, again, uh, the pain in the abdomen, uh, cramping, chest pains, arm pains, Shortness of breath. You find somebody gushing, no, no, no breath when walking because of the contraceptions that this person is using. You wash your clothes, you wash your, your utensils ter two minutes, the next minute you're already seated because you're you, you, uh, you short uh, of breath. Again, severe headaches. Many people are coming to the hospital telling us, oh, Dr. I don't have, I am suffering, I have, I'm having a headache. You, the BP is okay, uh, the BP probably is okay. Well, how do you, what have you done? Do you have any stress? No. But when you go deeper, you find this person is on a uh, femiplan. So there, where, where is she? That's for the cost of the, this severe headache. Depression. 
Again, some of us, me and Daktari and others, we are putting on uh, our eye, eye lenses, our spectacles, but most of us also are having vision difficulties because of contraception. But this is not mentioned to us. But again, you are told, if you find the, see this and this, please come back to the clinic when they, uh, they give you the combined oral pill. Again, we have so much of irregular uh, for, uh, menstrual flows. You find this irregularity of flows coming. You have so many other people also vomiting because of <laughs> this. <laughs> we have about the men. Again, <laughs> again we are... Uh, <laughs> sorry, the de uh, the de uh, somebody is not muted, please. Again, there is also the, uh, the, uh, the other part of... Um, hypertension, there is also uh, the other part where we, we require to understand what we are looking for. Again, brethren, it is high time that me and you understand that we have also what we call tubo avarian masses. This is about cysts, about fibroids. Where are they coming from? How comes our grandparents did not have this? Have you, did we have such kind of things? We didn't have. So we have what nowadays in medical field we call it a denexal ebullition or masses. That is tumor, ovarian. In the tubes you have the cysts because of what you are using. So again, we also have infertility. And that's why I say contraceptives is not a cure, it's not a treatment. As the Terry said, it's only a hard job to mess us up, to destroy us, to finish us. Again, for instance, Daktari on the on one of the other, uh, other uh, uh, one of the uh, types of um, contraceptives, what you call subdermal implants, for instance, Norplan, is produced in the UK, but is cannot even be sold there. It cannot be used there. Why? We have other drugs, for instance, uh, like uh, what you call the injectables. For instance, uh, on the injectables we have for the two months BMPA. We have net N, uh, which goes for three months, uh, DMPH for uh, two, uh, two months. The uh, net N is for three months. Most of us think we are using the depot, which is for three months, which is not. But it's net N, which is three months, which the carrier today uh, also try to explain much about it. So, a presence of duration. Yes, but once it's a presence of duration, we find even of, uh, some of the parents taking their own doctors, bringing their do own doctors, Dr. please inject this. But look, on also on a, uh, what we, uh, I'm calling subdamon, the north, the much they mess with us. But today, what do we, uh, do we think about it? The implant consists of, of the two rods. After we complained, there were three rods before, but now there's only two rods. But the effect is the same. They are, uh, they are not contraceptive. So today, they don't allow the implantation of the zygote to take place also. Again, we also have uh, the loss of blood because of heavy flows. And mo most of us, what would happen after that? Secondary, anemic. Once we become anemic, again, other minerals will come, a problem will happen. Because after that, you will start uh, even starting people uh, hearing, uh, hearing to, from some people saying, I need this, I need to now start taking supplements. But what are these supplements too? Brethren, today we need to open our eyes when we think about this. When we think about, um, like I mentioned about interuterine devices, but I want to, uh, uh, kindly, let, me, let us listen on uh, just a mere language, a mere chemistry that we learned in our secondary schools. When a metal, react with water. What is produced? What is produced is a hydroxide and a hydrogen gas. And here we have copper in a woman's body where there is water. What is be produced? We have a hydroxide and a hydrogen gas. So this child cannot survive. So even if the child survives, we'll have a direct induced abortion because of the hydrogen gas. Even me and you cannot live on hydrogen gas. Again, how can we live, uh, live with hydroxide? Hydroxide is rust. In Kikui, we call it Vutu. How? How can we live with this? So necessarily, we have to think about this. So today, many people ask, even Daktari, how Daktari do you know about women? I, I'm a priest and I talk about heaven, but I have never been into heaven. 
So brethren, again, there are so many people who are mechanics, but they don't own a vehicle. So today I'm talking about women, even though I'm not a woman. And necessarily, I know more about women than probably themselves, they know themselves. So today, again, contraception affects the self-personality of a woman. You feel unworthy because of the more you are used. You feel the worthy you can be used by anyone. You can be used at any time. So the materialistic part, part of it, St. John Paul says now, we can become even technological prostitutes because of contraception. So today, technological prostitution is coming through contraception. The one evil leads to another. Today, in the medical field, natural family planning is referred to as periodic abstinence. And periodic abstinence is not necessarily uh, meant for only married or not married. Even those people who are married, those who are not married, they are called to abstinence. But very little, and we are working towards that. I know my chairman, Dr. Stephen Chimodo, uh, we are working towards making sure even within the syllabus of the medical that natural family planning can be taught in details, not just mentioned, because mostly that's what is happening. So today, again, I need to ask you to understand this from uh, a contraception because like every drug you are given somebody uh, somebody is not muted again the part that we need to look at is that every drug you receive in the hospital and that's why later will you uh, get prescribed to a drug a single drug because most of the drugs you are supposed to look at the contraindication, the side effects of a drug. But I ask myself, for instance, there is what Dr. Terry mentioned about the mark, the morning after pill. It's an emergency pill because it's an apotheosis. It kills. Today, we are going to the hospital, to a pharmacy, to a dispensary, to a friend who is a medical practitioner. Please give me this. And you are provided with that as young as the age of 10. So at this age, what will happen in the years to come? This person, you, we never know about your history. We know, don't know what happens about you. We don't know whether you have any allergy. We don't know whether you suffer from any cardiovascular uh, infection before. We don't know whether you had hypertension. So what will happen? It's a, it's a death pill. In reality, we are opening another doorway of euthanasia, killing people because of having mercy to them. We are, we are saying that this person needs to have a, a, a sweet death, which is a sweet death, which is a bitter death. My dear friend, today, as we continue to think about this, I also need to talk about men. For instance, we have the condom, where some of us also have uh, suffer from the allergy of the fluid of the latex. Nobody speaks to, this, to us about this. So some of them will come thinking probably they are already even suffering from some of the uh, some of the STI, sexually transmitted diseases or infections. But in reality, is the allergy. But from the allergy, another problem will come. Again, because of these contraceptives, most of us now they have erectile dysfunction, both men and women. That's why decreased libido. You find this woman every time goes, the husband comes from his journey and says, I am not okay. I don't want it. But remember 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Give what belongs to him. Let us be able to be, uh, to make sure we meet the needs of each other. But we don't want to meet the needs of each other. So how can we be able to live together? So this person becomes violent. So we have, no wonder we have rapes even in the family. Again, this husband, because today knows this can happen, we are not open to our um, to life, again, cannot perform, cannot even enjoy the conjugal act. The same to this woman. The mind is, what if I become pregnant? So today, uh, we, we think about what is happening. So with the barrier methods about the condom, the diaphragm, the, uh, the cervical cup, we have to think about all this. We have also what we call the, uh, the female condom, where we have the female uh, in Spain, but here we call it uh, uh, um, feminine. So today we have to uh, ask ourselves, why this? 
Why uh, is this being brought to us? But you have natural family planning, and although with the natural family planning is 100%, but it requires the cooperation of all of us. That is the male and female. It requires that me, uh, me and you talk to, to one another. It will increase our intimacy. It will spice our marriage. It will be a help us with self-knowledge of ourselves. You can be able, I always tell women, that if you know yourself, you can tell as you are working with your husband, with your children, with yourself as you are working, you can tell, yes, my egg has been released. At that time, you can tell. You can tell even by the look of your face because of how tender your breasts are. You know, I tell even my, my, my fellow doctors here when we are working, I tell them it is not necessarily to take a pregnancy test. If you know yourself, the pregnancy test should probably come to only confirm the pregnancy, but not to come and test whether you're pregnant. But once you are, every time you are using a contraceptive, then what will happen? There is also another major problem, actually, my dear friends. Nowadays, because of the lifestyle and especially because of the contraceptive mentality, most of our women, the, the age of menopause has come down. Have come down. Now, earlier we used to say 45. Nowadays, you can get even below that. Women, because they have been on EP, they have been on contraceptives. So how do we help one another? One understanding what you mean, what you want in life. You want, you want yes, you'll be married. I always tell people nowadays, that is why even uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the bride and the bridegroom's vestments, the gowns have changed. Because most of us, when we are, get, we are getting married, we are not get, getting married as gifts, neither fruits of, uh, to, to this person, but as danger, as trouble, as, uh, 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 as used uh, sacks, which are already have, have patches. So today, we have to make sure we are responsible. And for us to be responsible with natural family planning uh, so that we do away with uh, interception, then we have to make sure, one, every couple uh, is to discern God's will at each stage for their family size. What do you want? You must be responsible. Yes, we are not saying you become rabbits. No, we are saying you must be responsible. Every husband and wife is, has an obligatory discernment of the indications of God's will concerning their family. It is a matter of taking it day by day, month by month, child by child, act by act, prayerfully assessing personal and wider circumstances to discern what God plans might be. Not your plan, not my plan. It is him who planned that you be united. Is You invited him to your marriage. Remember Jesus was invited. He did not invite himself at the uh, wedding at Cana. John chapter 2 verse 1 to 11. You have to invite Jesus. And you have to uh, invite every act. Who can come? What can happen? Again, let us, that's why I said from the beginning, let us not be selfish. Let not be materialistic. Once you are selfish and materialistic, you don't care. I want it. I do it. I ask myself, today when I'm in public, when I feel like farting, do I fart? I don't. So today, when I feel that I need to, uh, uh, to, to urinate, do I urinate in public? No. So why should I feel to have sex and have it? Why should I feel that I, I, I want to have my wife? I want to have my husband when it is, we have not communicated, when we, we don't agree? So the church will not tell individual couples how many children they should have. We are not to tell it. The church will never tell you, but the church will not. Uh, the church will not instruct couples. You should have two, three, four, five children or six. Instead, it teaches it is um, the married couple themselves who must, in the last analysis, arrive at these judgments before God. Prudence and generosity are two key concepts to be kept in mind in this decision-making arena. Again. The other point, responsible parenthood is not exclusively about limiting family size. Some of us will just think about family, family size. It is not. It is about as well limiting um, responsible parenthood can also mean that willingness to accept a larger family, 
The church makes special mention of those who, with a gallant heart and with wise and common deliberation, undertake and bring up suitably even a relatively large family. Pope Paul VI, on July 25th, 1968, give, gave his prophetic word through the encyclical of human beauty, human life. And on Article 14, or Paragraph 14 and 11, he mentions about responsible parenthood, what I'm talking about. John Paul II who took it over and brought it on the theology of the body, family consortium, and also we can see that on the Vatican II document, especially Gaudium and Spes and others that, uh, that follow from there. Responsible parenthood requires trust in divine providence. And on divine providence, procreation requires trust in divine providence. In doing so, spouses glorify God and acquit themselves to the duties of their state. Not the state of others, not the state of operation controllers, IPPS. And since, uh, 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 when we come here, we, we can talk, talk about uh, our Ministry of Health. Today they want to uh, control this. We can't talk about IPAS. We can't talk about Rockefeller uh, Foundation. We can't talk about the Bill Gates. We can't talk about Soros. They are there to only want to control us. Uh, you should not be controlled. Take your state. Take your responsibility. That is why natural family planning is you, not from outside. That's why I said it is not a Catholic contraception. It will never be. So, God will not send a child to any couple that he cannot provide for. Of course, parents must balance the duty to procreate with the welfare of their present future children. Again, I also bring up this point. Spouses must reach the divine law at all times. We must always try to understand, to move up. Let us not remain on the comfort zone. I want to enjoy, I want to seek pleasure. Well, that's why we talk about the philosophy of hedonism. As long as I enjoy, I'm okay. As long as this is giving me happiness, it's okay. So today, if you are having oral sex that is, and you are enjoying, that is okay. No, mouth is to eat. You cannot continue having uh, anal sex and you, you, you are saying you are enjoying. That is uh, for a long haul. So the same for us to understand what you, uh, we are uh, talking about uh, uh, respecting the divine looks. In seeking either to postpone or establish a conception, union and procreation must never be separated. Love and life must always be united. They must be united. And once they are united, every marital act must remain open to life. Artificial con uh, con uh, contraception, what we have just mentioned about contraceptives, can never be justified under any circumstance. Responsible parenthood requires the necessary dominion of will and reason over instinct or passion. It is not just about our feelings. It is not just about what we want. We are not animals, we are rational beings, but now with contraception, we are being reduced to animals. We are following instinct. Again, spouses may generously decide to raise a large or a family or in grave circumstances postpone a new birth. It's their responsibility. Natural family planning, though there are various methods of natural family planning, we have spoken about Ciprogamo, the basal body temperature. We have spoken about the Canada method, the reading method, the bearing ovulation method. We have spoken about this, but all of them will help you to know when the ovulation takes place. Once you know the ovulation when it takes place, you can be able to choose the gender of your child. You can be able to select, I want a boy, I want a girl. How many of them do I want to have them? And God will bestow you graces of that because we only cooperate with God. That's why I, I always tell you, it's all, the best time to pray is when light is coming and when it's going back to its owner. We are sure that God is there. There is no time. Even those people who try to commit suicide, sometimes they don't die because God does not will them to die. Again, today, those people who are barren, even if we started ha having a fundraising to help them get children, they will not have. 
until God says yes. So today I'm saying it is very important for them to choose. It's through natural family planning that you can be able to choose. And not only that, even those people who say about eugenics, natural family planning can help us even better because we know when to have a very good child, a very stable child. But the more you continue to use contraception, that cannot happen. And even the children we have, they become weaklings. Their immunity is low. And some of them have even been born saying, I refuse to be uh, uh, stopped from coming. They come out holding the IUD with them and saying, I have it, take it, take it where you want, wanted me to be. So today, God is the crown. So for grave motives or just reasons, not trivial or selfish ones also come legitimately uh, uh, postponed and your birth by moral, uh, by moral means of circumstances, if circumstances are serious enough. This postponement may be for indefinite time. Yes, but they know how to do it with God. Each couple has a responsibility to prayerfully ascertain whether such a serious reason is present in their lives. Remember James what he says? You always pray, but your prayers are not answered because they don't pertain to the will of God. So today I ask myself, do I go to a football pitch when I know I will not win? Do I plant beans knowing I'll harvest maize? Can I have a harvesting if I did not reap? You reap what you sow. So today it is upon us to know when we are getting to bed, when we are having sex, we expect there must be a fruit. And what the fruit comes, then we are there to accept it. And it is not us to decide what comes because sometimes we see uh, we use, using the Utah sound and we say this is not right, this is not right. This person is not, uh, will be very short according with the sciences we have now. This person will have difficulties in living because of this and this. And we say, you don't want this. Who gives you that permission? It is because of the contraceptive mentality, selfishness, materialistic. And today we need to see. As uh, this month, we are still continuing to think about the creation and how we need to respect creation. Uh, Pope Francis talks about Laudato Si. Paragraph 233, 234, 235, he talks about the Eucharist. With the, uh, uh, um, when it comes to creation, that God himself came and cleansed creation. Me and you, I told the veteran, we are a new creation through baptism. We must not be taken back to the old creation. We must be taken again anew to a new creation. And that's why I say the seventh thing that Periodic abstinence can be used where there are serious motives to space birth. In the scenario of natural family planning, you can say after two years through breastfeeding method, that's, that's what our traditionally most of our mothers or grandmothers used. You realize that the interval was two months. After, three, uh, two, two, after two years, another child was born. Your aunt, your mother was born after two years because they were breastfeeding, but not only uh, in short intervals, you breastfeed continuously, always. If the child cries, you give her the breast. And therefore, it will act as a control of the estrogen and the progesterone. And that is a natural mo model. And you don't pay for it. You don't need 200 shillings to go to a pharmacy. You just need to be where you are. You just need six months to settle down, know your staff, study your staff. Natural family planning is not only a scientific method, but it's also an art. And I believe we always enjoy beauty, art, beats. You enjoy the rosary because of the art in the rosary. You enjoy the beauty of your wife. You enjoy the beauty of your husband. Dr. Sari and the, my participants and all the viewers, I want also to mention something on another level of contraception. The level of contraception that I want to mention is where some people come, this is a natural way of contraception, where some of us suffer medically and they cannot consider. It is important to note that. But those artificial methods of contraception, we cannot allow. Those people who suffer some diseases 
For instance, maybe a man and this man have few sperm, what we call oligosperm. They cannot give birth. That is, a some people now are working on a scientific way to work to the, uh, thinking about that. To, to find out whether they can be able uh, to, to deal with that. We have other, uh, other, other, uh, other things. Uh, I, I will not go into details, but uh, it is important I mention about some syndromes. We have what we call common syndrome. And this is uh, where uh, um, the hypo, uh, the trusting sometimes or, or by, uh, linked with the X. And this, uh, the, uh, this person will not be able uh, in future to have children if not treated well at young age. It is important to think about that. We are not saying no to, uh, to that. I'm trying to make a demarcation of a few things when mentioning this, knowing this where it will go and who is watching and not watching and who will later watch. Again, it is very important, my dear friends, uh, to also think about what we call the Turner syndrome, exo uh, carotide. It is also very important in male to, to consider that because uh, initially it, it may lead to the stake of the gonads. And uh, if it happens, then this person will have what we call sexual infantilism. If it happens, then in a way that is our earlier contraceptive of that, that person can never be able to deal with that. Again, we also have what we probably didn't mention about surgical uh, contraception. These are permanent ways of uh, uh, contraception, which means about we have for women what we call TL, two body uh, allegation, and we have for men what we call uh, vasectomy. Uh, we have different modes of the two, but the, the mode of how they work is different, is the same, is morally the same. So we cut the, uh, uh, the, the fallopian tubes, and once the fallopian tubes are, are cut, then the ova or the egg cannot be transported. So all the other sperms, the spermatozoa, cannot reach the egg. Also, it happens also with uh, uh, the man. So we, we, uh, the, uh, the, the testicles, the, uh, uh, the semen is still there, the, the urethra is what, uh, and the vast, uh, vast difference is what we are, we are able to interfere with, so that again, the sperms are not able to move. But all these have their own side effects. We find ovarian, uh, ovarian problems, as we mentioned. We also have ectopic pregnancies uh, in some situations. And for men, we also have what we are calling nowadays prostate, and uh, we, are, we find that also their testosterone levels goes very high. But I will also want to mention, as I say, we are rational beings. The main sexual organ is the brain. That is why we have the pituitary gland, and that is what the gatodrophin works upon. And once it works upon that, then the, uh, the hormones are released. And once we are released, then we are able to have what we need. I am trying to uh, summarize what I had prepared so that in case there are questions, we can be able to respond to them. Thank you for that uh, short, uh, uh, maybe very fast presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Father. Now, uh, I know we are well fed, and so we are ready to uh, start going through questions. I've seen a number of questions have to do with the use of uh, condoms, whatever barriers, people say they have no side effects. I would like to get some direct comments on the same from uh, you, Father, and uh, maybe Dr. Karanja. Hello, can I ask a question? Uh -huh. Just wait first, we handle that to do with uh, with condoms, please, Geoffrey. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Before I even go uh, to uh, the side effects of the condom, I would say that there are sexual transmitted infections that do not necessarily uh, require to uh, have a penetration. And one of them, because it will be very key for us to understand about the condom using this at uh, the, uh, this point, because there's what we call HPV, human papilloma virus. You don't necessarily require to cover, you, uh, if you have to protect yourself using the condom, you have to, uh, to cover yourself totally. 
I don't know, during this period of COVID-19, you have seen how people are putting on the PPX, the protective gear. I think that's the only way you can protect yourself is suffering or is a patient of uh, HPV. So today, HPV, there is breakage. And I would like to say what most of the facts that I'm giving belongs to what themselves say, not myself. It is them who tell us our condoms do this. In the year 2013, they did a research on a con the condom. And uh, they said that out of 25,000 condoms, 16% of them fail. So when they say that, that means out of 12 condoms, three fail. So today I will ask, will I take a flight knowing it will fail? They will tell me have a parachute. So that will be safer. But I better remain on the ground and I will not fail. I will not die. So again, I said about the, uh, the allergy of the latex. Again, with the condom uh, uh, as an effect of uh, the, on the Christian part of it, it varies. It becomes a barrier of the sperm to meet the the oil, the fertilization, and therefore you, it is not open to life. If it is not open to life, then that is already a problem to uh, the conjugal act. We are already desecrated. That is why Jesus Christ says, "You have made the house of uh, the house of my father a den of robbers." How many robots do you have? In, do we have in the house? Dr. Tari, take over. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Father, for your contribution. Um, the question about condom is a very special question because a lot of people don't see the real, the real problem with the with the condom. I've seen Dr. Eda, Dr. Eda Buta comment on it on this forum. And she is uh, very, very correct in what she has said. That remember, you are trying to, that, that that's now you're going to, in, 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 a, in, a, in a spiritual way, you're going to separate the man from the wife by putting the barrier in between them. And therefore, you're going to encourage infidelity. Number two and of most importance is the fact that the condom is not very useful. If it is being used for pregnancy, I can tell you as a gynecologist that the most difficult thing to achieve is actually a pregnancy. I told you before that a woman in her life is 98% infertile and only 2% fertile. And most of the time people use that condom for the thinking that they want to stop a pregnancy. It doesn't, it is of no use at all. They could not become pregnant anyway. It has a very high failure rate. And remember this failure rate when looked at only on a pregnancy is about that 2%. And if up to 50% of people who use it during the fertile phase still fail in matters of pregnancy. What is, what use is condom anyway? Condom cannot protect you from viruses. It can't pro protect you from HIV. It can't protect you from anything. So I always say that just like from the beginning, why condoms were used in Egypt more than 4,000 4, years before Christ, they were used as clothing for the male organ. Just like you put a hat on your head, that is probably, then you can use it just to dress your system, but not for any particular functioning. Because condoms, I have said before, because condoms have holes, because condoms, are, condoms fall off because condoms are very short, like Father said, and therefore you can't cover yourself. You would need it to wear it like a box that's short for it to be useful. And it is a very small thing. And therefore the fluids that are produced during marital activity will always catch 
touch each other even when you are wearing it. So the condom is not a useful gadget. Remember, in 1985, what the late President Moy said in one of his talks, and people thought he was joking, that he kitu haina faida hapa. He kitu inaletwa hapa tununue pesa kwa wanafikiria sisi ni wajinga. You know, even today, I personally agree with Moy. This thing is here to be used by fools. Now, fools are very many, even very educated ones. They are still, they cannot explain how it can work. It cannot prevent anything. So if people want to wear it, as they go to work, go on and wear it, but not for protection against anything. Yes, like you can see further, is showing the book, The Case Against Condoms, which is a very well written, it was written by a, a, previous, a previous chair of the, um, of the Pontifical Council for the family, uh, Cardinal Trujillo. So it is a book you can also look at. But I can tell you, I have studied condom not less than 30 years. I have gone to the factories where they are made. I have seen, I, I have witnessed the, can, the famous Canadian study of putting red fluid in it and seeing what happens in the outside. It was there. So in my, in my mind, when I talk to people about contraception, the condom is not one of them because it is a useless thing. And I would want to challenge anybody to use the condom when they are fertile. They will still conceive unless they now the man gets allergy to it or a woman is allergic to it. Otherwise, as a matter of protection, as a matter of a contra contraception, it is not a useful gadget. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari and uh, Father Gatimu, uh, for that wonderful response. Now, uh, Geoffrey wanted to ask some questions. Geoffrey, could you now speak, please? Okay, maybe it might not be a question, maybe just something a concern. Uh, to some of us, uh, we are married maybe to nurses, and nurses have been in schools and uh, taught a lot and a lot. Now, for example, just when I was telling my wife about uh, things to do with the contraceptives and more so to be specific about the IUD. And she says that the, we have the hormonal and the non-hormonal, and therefore the non-hormonal, which is the IUD, has no any effect and she's not ready to accept anything to do with that because she has been in school and more research are going on and they are well convinced. So I don't know, how can you help me, doctor, about that? Because he's not ready to accept anything about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I see your point clearly. And I see it on this front because you use that word, that she's the, in the medical field. In my time, I have had the opportunity not only to do, to read gynecology and finish, but also to teach students of medicine in undergraduate and postgraduate for some time. And I can tell you what you're talking about now, even gynecologists themselves, most of them, 80% of them have no idea. I have in fact had gynecologists themselves arguing about the same coil. In fact, some gynecologists even think that the coil stops the male seeds from going up. They even think that actually it, it works by stopping conception. If a gynecologist thinks like that, then you can know how serious we are. And you are talking about a nurse. That you are talking about absolute lack of information, absolute lack of knowledge. The coil I, is what I started with. And I started with it to say, especially in a Christian family, would you accept abortion in your home on a monthly or every three months or every five months? Would you allow it in your own home? Because when your wife is wearing a coil, when she uses a coil, there is nothing else. The coil cannot prevent her from conceiving in any other known way. It has a 100% method of working, which is by causing abortion. I also told you this, and I see it a lot, a lot amongst the young couples now, those couples who are married for about 10 years and less, those who, are, who have one or two children. I see this problem more and more. 
They think of today, they don't think about tomorrow. The coil, when a, a woman wears, she should from the beginning know. And there is no medical, new medical knowledge that I am not aware of. I am an avid reader of the culture of death. Everything they, pro they, pro they produce, I, I stop everything I'm doing to know the best there is about that thing and to know how they intend to exterminate the people with. There is no new knowledge about the coil. In fact, the coil, the only thing they can call new, it is that it has been added a poison called levanogesterol. So it is now Mirena. Mirena. And Mirena is an expensive coil which combines the plastic and now a hormone. And it causes atrophy. Atrophy is thinning out of the womb. It is a better a boating medication now, a boating structure now. But above that, it also thins the lining of your of the of the lady's birth canal, and therefore she has difficulties when having marital activity. And she may think she's safe. And I can tell you that she has no idea. And the only thing you can do is to continue and maybe ask her maybe to also have a discussion with also other medical people, and she will see that it is not true. In fact, the coil is very dangerous. Yes. Okay, maybe uh, to add, uh, to respond to Geoffrey also, on the addition of what Dr. Stephen Martin is saying, is that both of them in the structure is the same. They all have a string that comes through the opening of the cervix. And just by that itself, it's very important to understand that uh, the way the human anatomy, which I understand are those in the medic have done, the body cannot keep anything uh, which is foreign on the body without reacting. And that's why we have even what we call most of the time we have miscarriages because if the child dies, it cannot be kept there. Okay. So uh, when we have those uh, the the coil or the IOD, the strength keeps on irritating the cervix and making sure that the cervix. So if the cervix is not crossed, everything that is on the on the uterus will always be moving out. But with the irritation, whether it's, uh, it is hormonal or not hormonal, with the irritation, with time, we expect there will be a reaction because of that irritation. And therefore, that is one of the causes of the infections. Not only the infections, we also have the issue of uh, the dead cells because of the irritation. And with the dead cells, that is why we have the cancers of the cervix sometimes also of the, uh, uh, the endometrial cancer. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the response. And I, I know we are, uh, we are past four and I know there are still some questions. Anybody with a burning question, uh, you can raise up your hand, then we give you a chance. Uh, also to remind you that this talk is on YouTube, so uh, it can always be referred. Thank you very much, Tony. You can unmute and, and uh, ask your question or give a comment. Tony Namasaka. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah, here yeah, I yeah. am. Thank you so much for your welcoming. I thank Father Gatimu and uh, Daktari and Father Boni and everyone was shared. So I have a burning question, or rather concern. As a pro-lifer, there are some questions that we do get uh, when we are talking about contraceptives. So a question like, uh, what should uh, we do if at all you are talking or you are speaking against contraceptives? If a person asks a question like that, how can we answer it?
So, okay, Father, 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 starts. Okay, thank you. Uh, one, when you, uh, you find someone uh, who one attacked, because that is an attack of the point of contraception or natural family plan, it is important always, that's what is, I always stand for, give fact. The Catholic Church and the Church will speak of building, formation of the conscience. Let this person understand the fact of contraception. And after that, understand the sacrament of marriage as a gift. It is not something that we go to, the, to buy from the shop. It is something that we need. And it is not a contract. It is a covenant. It is something lifelong and is bound by love. And it's only once we understand that, we can be able to understand that love and procreation go handy. And once they go handy, we can be able to, under, to uh, uh, open, uh, openly be able to embrace natural family planning. But if you don't have facts, always refer this person. Never give false information. Never give false information. It becomes even a threat to ask for life. Actually, we fight the anti-lifers using their false information. Today, I always say, destruction precedes delusion. If you put the, the, uh, we have false information, then the truth will be distorted. It will no longer be true. And the last, after some time, it becomes propaganda. Yes. So if I may add something to what Father has said, it is this, that uh, in the pro-life work, some of us have been there for quite a number of years. And I advise this uh, to Tony, because Tony, I can see on your face, and I thank God for you, you are a young person. And when I hear a young pro-life person speak, I know that God, like he promised, will always work. Let me tell you this, Tony, do not in your life, fight contraception. Never fight contraception. It is not worth fighting. Do something like St. Paul's Chapel is doing today. They have invited us here, today me and Father and all of the other participants, to do a very simple thing. To bring out the available knowledge about contraceptives what people have not been told about contraceptives. I am very enthusiastic in dealing with that. What people have not been told, the lies they have been told, the untruths they have been, they have been given, the trap that they have been put in, the attacks that have taken place to them as individuals, to their spouses, to their families, and to the whole community. This I am ready to speak every time, but it is not worth my time to fight contraception. Contrace contraception is actually a field of fools, and they are not because they do not, they do not know other things. They could be professors in the normal field, but in matters of life, in matters of these, they do not know. And because they do not know, your work as a pro-life person is to give education. Educate them in the morning, educate them in the afternoon, and educate them in the evening. This is the way to deal with it. Do not fight it. You will do not, it is not worth fighting. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Now, uh, maybe we'll take some two, three more questions uh, because we've got to end at some point. Uh, I know uh, there is somebody raising his or her hand up called Galaxy S9. I really discouraged this idea of uh, uh, using phone names. So if possible, you can change your name first and then you raise your question because we want to refer you by your name. Yeah? And... And that should be uh, good enough. Uh, as, as Galaxy is doing that, uh, any other person with a question? Raise up your hand, please. 
There has been quite some uh, excitement about the nature of family planning. It appears many people are yet to understand how it works and whether, because they've been made to believe by the merchants of death and uh, uh, through contraception that uh, family planning is the same as using contraceptives. So uh, I want to refer you also back to our uh, previous talk. It's on YouTube channel. Just dig into it and learn what we learned before. Whenever you have questions, just forward them to us. Now, I'll give uh, Anastasia Maguilu a chance to speak. If you are not speaking, please, and you are not a, a moderator, just uh, mute, or I will just remove you because you need some peace. Anastasia? Anastasia, un unmute, then you ask your question, please. Okay. Good evening, all. Uh, this question is to uh, Dr. Stephen. I'll Kindly raise your voice. Hand. Okay. This question is to Dr. Stephen. I was just uh, wondering, uh, between the ages of 40 to 47, is it uh, safe to have a baby? Thank you. Thank you very much. And it is uh, actually unknown to you is a very, very wonderful question. And I want to start here for everyone. Number one is that the egg never ages. The male seed does not age. The female egg becomes mature after fertilization. That is when it releases the second polar body the female egg has two polar bodies. The first one is released when it is growing, but the second one, which signifies full maturation, is done after fertilization. And therefore, the egg of a 50-year-old lady, which is fertile, is the same age with the egg of a lady who is 20 years. And if you, if you, if you knew a bit of what I do, I try to help people who have gone many, many years with the problems with having children, and we have not seen any bigger number of uh, babies with the problems, and I am not expecting it, and nobody should expect it. And therefore, I want to say this to disabuse what is happening in society. There is a lot of false information being passed by people who are fighting children that if you reach a particular age, do not have children. There is no scientific data for that, and you do not even need science for that. History will tell you that in our lives, the last child, till in fact, like in Africa, other things came, the last child was considered God's child. Is a child that any couple got before God's closed the womb. My people, in fact, call them Kehigada, and it is done by God, not by people, and they are normally very special and very intelligent children. I will take, if I am allowed by Peter, 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 allow me just two minutes to say something that is important here. That natural family planning has gone through a lot of changes. For the last 15 years, I have changed the natural family planning that I was taught, that I taught to what we call fa fertility awareness. And fertility awareness, we teach it in a very short time and anybody should be able to get it. And we teach it like this. Number one, that the only thing that matters in a marriage is if a woman is fertile or not and she can never conceive unless she is fertile. Number two, if a woman has 12 eggs in one year, only a half of them will ever be fertile. That means five to six. No woman has more fertility than six times to seven times in a whole year. Number three, you cannot conceive unless you have three symptoms. You must have mucus, you must be slippery and you must be wet. Of the 3,000 
couples that I have dealt with in the last 15 years in this study, and why I'm actually writing a book on this, we have found that nobody has more than four days of fertility in, in, in when fertility comes. And fertility does not come every month. A lot of people, it comes after two or three months. And therefore, understanding fertility, understanding the way the body of the woman works is something you teach them, you teach the couple in five to ten minutes and they do not fail. So there should be no mystery about, about managing reproduction naturally because nature is very clear cut on this issue. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I, I want to believe you are done. Uh, now I I'll go. I'll go ahead and give Margaret Maina a chance to ask a question, and then followed by Juliet, and then I think we should be winding up. So Margaret, unmute and uh, ask your question. Hi, uh, my name is Margaret. Uh, I have a question. So what's your advice to young couples who are not like, ready to have kids yet and with, with the lessons learned and the misinformation we've been having? So what's your advice to young kids, young couples? I mean? My advice is, as a, as a doctor is this. Number one is that um, if I was talking as a father, I would not wish my daughter to get married and I am a father of many girls, I would not wish my daughter to get married unless she's wait, she's, she wants to have a child. Going to wait in marriage to have a child, while you just meeting, while you just marrying so that you can have, a, you can meet together. So, but having said that, I want to say this very clearly. Every child, every girl child that we bring in our families, when they reach puberty and before they reach puberty, we need to teach them about the growth of the girl's body. We do not wait till they have their periods to teach them about periods. We must also teach them about the other things that happen when a girl grows. A girl must not go to the hospital because she has seen some mucus, she's feeling slippery and she is feeling wet. This is a knowledge that our great, great, great grand, grand, grandparents gave to, our, gave to their daughters when they were bringing them up in what was called, in fact, when they were changing from childhood to girlhood. And because most African countries, most African communities did that at the age 11, 12, that is when what is disturbing science and disturbing educationists was taught fertility awareness and especially do not get married if you do not know fertility awareness you must know because you are the pillar created by god in marriage to govern ch about children you must know when does a woman become when can a woman have a child and therefore you must know Fertility like the back of your hand. When fertility comes in, immediately you know and you can tell your husband, you can tell your spouse, I am fertile because we are planning not to have a child now, then let us not meet. And because this takes place for a very short time. And unless you are not married, those who are married know that marriage is an institution of abstinence, that people meet once or twice per week, some, and when necessary, when one is sick, you can even go for two weeks or more. So this is what we are lacking in the teaching of our, of our people, and especially even when you are being prepared for marriage. One of the tools that every person who is getting married must be given is how, when you get married, will you manage your fertility because we don't expect you to be getting a child every year. We expect you to be generous and expect you to be responsible. Those two words go together, generosity and responsibility. No fertility awareness. I really would feel very, very bad when I see especially 
Catholics who have their children without knowledge of fertility awareness. I feel very, very bad when I see Christians, Christians of all denominations, where girls are reaching marriage age and they have no idea about fertility awareness, they are being set up for the, for the, for the contraceptors to come and destroy them. I am calling on all of you, my brothers and sisters, that the time has come. The new dawn is here. We must get tap from our lazy seats where we sit and we must now go out to our families and our communities and teach our children fertility awareness. They are Christian children. They are Christian. They are children of the light. They are children of knowledge. And unless we give that knowledge, we will have this blame game, blame game. And in fact, we shall bring the contraceptors to teach them the sex education they are asking in schools to destroy them even more. Nime Marisa. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. I, 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 Juliet, could you ask your question? I think we should end in six minutes. <laughs> Juliet, kindly ask you a question. Okay. Am I online? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 My name is Juliet. I thank the panelists. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, my kind of query or more information kindly on what is called the morning after the pills. Can you please give more information on the pills? This goes to the doctor and of course father kindly because the youth these days are so much convinced about the the non pregnancies particularly on that particular pill which is called the morning after thank you juliet i had um, all participants i had talked about this pill but juliet has asked about it she didn't hear about it and mm -hmm. it is extremely important that everybody understands the morning after pill. It is what Juliet I call the demonic pill, the pill of death, the death pill. This pill is created, it, is, it was previously called RU486. It is produced mainly to cause abortion and it does not do anything else. Number two, mm -hmm. it has very high content of progesterone, 0 0.75 milligrams of progesterone, while normal pills have 0 0.03 milligrams. It is 25 times bigger than the normal pill. Number two, in one day, a girl who could be very young is taking the equivalent of 50 tablets of the normal microlute pill in this pill. The greatest problem with this pill is that it sets up the people who use them for future cancer of the breast. And I tell people clearly, if you have used more than four doses of these in your life, just tell us where you want us to bury you when your time comes, because you will get cancer of the cervix or cancer of the ovary. Na hi unapata makusudi, nikutaka kwako, do not take death pill. The morning after pill is a demonic pill. Do not touch it. Tell the people who manufacture it, IPPF, to take it to America and Europe, but leave Africans alone. Leave our children alone. Leave the, our wives alone. So, Juliet, I tell you, Michael, this drug, the, 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 the morning after pill, is made with a, with a drug called levonorgestrel. The content is 0 0.75 milligrams. Two of them are taken within 24 hours. They are being sold without, without prescription. They are worse than any other drug you need prescription for. And they are being told like that, sold like that because of greed in this country, because of irresponsibility in the leadership in this country, because of irresponsibility in the medical people in this country, and especially the pharmacists. They are selling it even to children. It is a pill of death. It kills children and finally kills the person who killed the child in the same pot. 
Thank you very much, Daktari. Nothing could uh, be uh, better. It couldn't have been spoken much better. Uh, I will give one more person, and that is Keshi Ann. Her hand has been up. I'm, I'm ignoring uh, Geoffrey and uh, another person there because they'd asked before. Okay, thank you. My question is, is there any abnormality of a child may be gotten in those later ages? Thank you very much. Uh, and I had, uh, Keshi, and I had answered that question. The age of the mother, the age of the father has nothing to do with the health of the baby. If you remember, if you read some history, which is true of inspired scripture, there was a girl called Sarah and her husband was called Abraham. I leave it there because father is in the house. There was another one, the greatest human being, as described by, as witnessed by Jesus Christ himself, that of all those born of women, there was not, there is none greater than John the Baptist. His mother was a very, very old lady. And his father, Zachariah, again, father is in the house. I just want to mention these because these are stories that are true. But I want to tell you also that I have been a doctor now. I've been in the medical profession for a long time, about 40 years. And I can tell you for sure, I have never seen a child who became sick because of the age of the mother. Mm -hmm. I have seen 15 year old, 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds with children who are born with the problems. But remember, every child is a lesson from God. And this lesson can be given at any age because each of them it comes to teach us how to love. So that's all I can tell you. Do not fear to have a child because of your age. If you are able to, go on. For me is to cheer you on. Go, bring the baby. Remember every soul you bring is unique, has never existed in this world. The kingdom of God gets a new member. Only you can do that. God does not create people anymore. Thank you very much. I think we will have to end it there. I will ask the moderators to share their last comments. I also want to recognize that there are many other doctors, part of the Catholic Doctors Association, like Dr. Eda. I, I've seen her engaging quite a, a bit with people. Uh, I don't know, Dr. Eda, can you say hi? If you're still there, you can say hi to people, uh, good to have you participating. We also have several others. I've also seen Dr. Mutuma, Geoffrey Mutuma. He also logged in uh, a little late and yeah. uh, there are many other people. Yes, um, well, I'm in town, I'm in a public place, so it won't be very easy for me to talk. But um, I would really like to appreciate Father Gatimo and Dr. Karanja. Dr. Karanja is a mentor to me. And for that brilliant presentation, I really hope that we can get this done in many other churches and many other parishes. And uh, I think we, we, can, we can start working towards getting a Zoom that can uh, accommodate more than 100 people because this is really in demand. I have so many people who are uh, ladies who, are, who need this knowledge. And uh, we, can never, we can never finish the... We can never, I mean, we can never, we, we, we can never talk about this enough because it's really something that is entrenched in the society, even among Catholics. And I was also one of them. There's a time I used to say, um, I actually was one of them. I was on the pill for five years because my mentor, she used to come to my church and she was also a Catholic. She was older than me and she was a gynecologist. And she told me, you know, these things about the Catholic Church, you know, you will realize that some of it is rubbish, which was a very, very bad thing that she did because she put me on the pill for five years. She told me that, uh, you know, your husband is going to leave you if you keep popping babies like this, your husband is going to leave you. Can you imagine? 
So this is the misinformation that is out there. And uh, I would like all the women to know um, the, 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 the side effects of contraceptives. The history of contraception in the eugenic movements is something that is, is very much hidden. So they think that these foreigners are coming to help us, but they're not helping us at all. And so thank you very much, Dr. Karanja and uh, Father Gatimo for your presentation. It was very good. So let's get this out. Let's, let's uh, try and get the Zoom that can accommodate many people. I hear that there's a fee we can pay. Um, then we get hundreds and hundreds of people on board. And I really want to bring this to my church, which is in Michael's. Yeah. Thank you I very much, Dr. Ari. Yeah, I Thank hope uh, Dr. Ari will be available because I want to now, uh, I, I'm really having ideas of uh, getting my parish in this, into this. Now they've started waking up and having Jumuya meetings. So this is the time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari. It was very good to hear your voice and more so from now uh, uh, the feminine gender. You know, uh, we, we only had uh, the key panelists who are uh, male. And uh, I've seen also we've had uh, quite a number of nuns, that is sisters here. Some of them have been able to chat me. Some of them are practicing uh, medics and uh, they've been uh, uh, talking about this privately and with their uh, various clients. So we are very much happy to have them. Uh, this talk wouldn't have been possible. The idea came here through the support and, and, and uh, suggestion of Father Connor, uh, who is uh, the chaplain for Kianda and uh, also affiliated to Strathmore University. Father Connor, you can say uh, a word and then maybe at the end also we will ask you to bless us. Father, Father Connor. Uh, we are not able to hear you. I know you're probably trying to speak, or oh, if you're still on. Uh, okay, maybe uh, he's experiencing something, some technical uh, challenge, but we are very much grateful and uh, happy uh, that he's been able to help us even get uh, uh, to reach other people and to broadcast it and to help us with the ideas. Thank you very much. So uh, at this point in time, I want to appreciate all the people who've participated in this. I want to appreciate all our, all our panelists and uh, uh, before the final blessing, uh, which uh, perhaps the Father, Father Gatimu will just give us, I ask that they give their last comments. I appreciate all the participants and uh, from next week we are going to have our the usual the premarital talks. It's a series of eight talks. For more information you can check our website which is family.stpaulschapelnbi.org. Yeah, under announcement section you will be able to see all the upcoming topics. Uh, next, the last Friday, every last Friday of the month we usually have some uh, talks to the family. And the coming one on 25th, we are going to have Dr. Father Connor going to speak to us about the call to family and leadership, family leadership. Everyone is welcome. And the details are on our website. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Stephen Karanja, tell us your last words, and then Father will close and bless us as we go. Father Connor, Father Connor is on, is on somewhere. I've seen that, uh, that comment. I'd seen him. Uh, I gave him a, I gave him a, an opportunity to speak. Geoffrey, just just don't mind. We will speak again. We'll have another time. Father Connor, are you there? You can say a word. I, I think he's unable to. So, Dr. just speak. Okay. I know. Yeah. I want to say this to all the participants today. That, that uh, Paul Peter Otieno, on behalf of 
St. Uh, St. Paul's uh, Chapel uh, group came to me and asked me to do this. And uh, I am extremely excited and I thank all of you. I appreciate St. Paul's and Peter Paul very much. I also appreciate, appreciate especially those of you who are able to participate. If each one of us can talk to one other person, then God will help this message to go by. We thank God he gave us this opportunity and for each of you to be able to come and say, let us continue to pray and hope, pray and act, not pray alone, pray and act to make it possible for tomorrow and the other day to have other panelists to come and discuss to us matters that will help our families. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much uh, for accepting. And it's good to say that uh, Dr. Karanja, this, this was going to be his first interaction with Zoom presenting. So we had to meet a number of times just to ensure that he's going Jose, to be able to do it. Jose. Thank you very much. And you can now do more of it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I, I think because of, uh, Father Connor has not been able to speak, we'll just close. Father Gatimu, just take us through the last give us comment and then give us a blessing thank you to paul peter Keno and uh, to st paul's chapel family i take this opportunity to appreciate uh, your invitation and always i'm humbled when it comes to protecting defending and promoting the family so again i take this opportunity to help, uh, to appreciate all the participants and all those who uh, probably even wished to be with us today. Uh, natural family planning expresses a profound openness to God, uh, God's will for a couple and to the family. It embraces both the unitive and procreative meetings for marital intimacy. It is a calling for us to realize that Christianity is not nature, but a living. It is uh, me and you every day to continue seeking the graces of God through uh, the sacraments, through uh, living in a community, and always trying to uh, make sure we work on our values. I seek and uh, call all parents everywhere, especially those with that, within this participation, to take their duty of relenting, educating your children. So that uh, others, especially the church, myself and others, we may become only secondary, but you must take your primary, primary role of educating your children. And once we educate our children, we can always realize even those who are married will require uh, uh, courses to always what we call ongoing formation. In our liturgy or in our celebration, in our faith, we call it Mr. Gorgia. If we do that, we shall remain happy and we shall enjoy the food that God has bestowed upon us. Thank you and may God bless you. I will speak with, uh, we have a prayer to appreciate God and to give thanks to God for what you've done to us. And we call even for blessings to our families wherever you are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord God, Father of all of us, pour down through your spirit of love all the blessing needed into our families gathered here and everywhere in the group, so that each one of us may fulfill his or her mission. Following your plan of love for the good of everyone. Lord, may our family be blessed in, uh, in the way that you want it to be. May we seek your divine will always in our families. And may we be a true image of your trinity in unity and action and in a life in common. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Your mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. Christ the Kingdom. Thank you, Father. So, Paul Peter and the participants. For the participants, I would like to bring this to attention. I know Dr. Karanja knows that. That in Nyeri we have our NFP clinic, which I, I, I learned. And uh, in case of more details, you can always reach, reach us and we can be able to still assist. You can also get to Mata Hospital. We have a department that deals with natural family planning. For further details, you can also reach uh, me through my number 0726832822. Or my email, uh, HLI Kenya2018 uh, at gmail.com. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Father. You can type it there for other people who didn't get it. They can just uh, 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 have a look at it. Yeah, they can screenshot. I thank everybody. Now the meeting is open. You can unmute and share what you have. <laughs> the meeting is over. And uh, thanks for your time and engagement. Thank you so thank you, much for the sharing. Dr. Karanja, it's good to see you after many years. Thank you, Father. It is nice to see you. You can't see me. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can see your name. So this is you can you. see? I can see Dr. Thomas on YouTube. And I can see yes, my mind. Great. <laughs> I, I, hope, Father, I hope, Father, you are all right. I know you are in... Are you still in uh, Lift Valley or you came back this way? I'm in the city. You're in the city? Should come for tea. Father, you can come. Come, I'll give you tea myself. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That is our space between us.